Good morning, Stampers and Crafters. Today, we are going to play with a new product that's coming out in the January to June Mini. Oh, any minute now. Uh, they're not available to you yet. Unless you're a demonstrator, you get to pre-order. So you can join now and start pre-ordering all these wonderful things all these demonstrators have been showing you the past month. Because as a demonstrator, you get to pre-order a month early. Well, coming out is Gilding Flakes. I don't know if you've tried these or not. I've done a couple videos uh, a couple years ago of these, uh, both Gilding Foils and Flakes. Gilding Flakes and Foils have been around for a long time. You can do more than just cards with them. You can, um, you can actually foil clothes. A lot of people use gilding foils to do uh, decorative frames on antique prints and things like that. It's a fun technique and it's, it, the uh, possibilities are, are limitless on how many things you can do with it. If you googled foil and gilding flakes, you just get a gambit of things. Well, the way Stampin' Up! has done it is they've given you this huge, huge, and trust me, these are going to last you a long time. And this is, let's see if I can tell how many ounces this is. Uh, oh, I don't see it. But anyway, it's, it's a large jar, and it's just the plain gold. Gilding flakes come in copper, bronze, silver. Uh, as you can see, I've been playing with them this morning and they stick to my nails. Um, they come in all different colors. Um, they're a little bit different than foil sheets. Um, foil sheets have a little bit different way of using them. For this class today, along with the gilding flakes, is you'll be able to get the heat and stick powder. Those of you that have been around a while, this was out, as you can see, this is probably the jar I had. I didn't pull out my new one that I just ordered. Um, heat and stick powder has been around for a long time and it's just now coming back, stamping up at it. You can use this heat and stick powder not only for your gilding flakes, you can use it for glitter, all kinds of stuff. The gist of the gilding flakes and the foil is that you want to use an adhesive that once it's dry, it stays tacky. And that's what heat and stick powder does. So you use it, that will show you, you use it like embossing powder, where you'll use your Versamark, add the heat and stick, and heat set it, barely. You just barely want this to melt. So that you don't, you know, lose, you know, make it permanent. If you heat it too much, it can be just permanent and it won't be tacky when you go to try to attach your flakes. So you can use your heat and stick powder. Um, Deco foil also has liquid adhesives. Um, these are, these take longer because obviously once you put them on, you wait till it you once you put it on you wait till it dries clear and then you can do your technique with the foils so this is just another option it takes a while to dry them mm. another option is simply tape double-sided tape we're going to show you how to do that too um the other trick about uh gilding you know gilded flakes is that you may be going, well, why would I want to get that one? I can just do gold foiling or gold embossing. Gilding flakes leave a really cool texture. And I hope that shows up. But I mean, it has a, a really neat texture that leaves on your projects. And, you know, you can do full images. You can do accents on your images. This would work perfect. If you were doing a two-step and you do your main image then do your heat and stick and use some gold flakes as your second step of your image like I said you could go on forever and ever 
I mean, I, you just play with them, but you're going to love this. So I'm going to show you how to make these two cards super fast. They're elegant and they're fun. So what we're using here is Blackberry Bliss, which is my all time favorite color. Uh, one, because I do like to emboss or do gold or add foils alongside of it. It's so rich and I just love it. Okay. All right. So we've got our Blackberry Bliss. And along with the mini catalog and the items that you're going to order, we will be in what is called celebrations in January. Where for every $50 that you spend before tax and shipping you get to choose items out of a, a smaller catalog that are free. Well, this Oso oh Ombre paper is one of the free items. Wait until you see this paper. You're going to love it. I mean, we all like ombre stuff. I know we just do. But look at the colors. You've got solid um, fades there. Look at that one. Oh, the turquoise. Oh. Or I think that's probably Bermuda Bay. But this is really a cool pack of paper. And it's called Oso oh Ombre. So we're going to use a piece of that. I'll just take this one right here that goes with my Blackberry Bliss. If anybody's ever got ideas how they store their 6x6, six six, leave me a comment. I, I've just never thought of a way to... I keep them in a little like shelf basket and I label them but I've never really thought of an idea of how to store my 6x6 six six. but if you have an idea just throw it out there for me okay so what we want to do we are going to be using the floating and fluttering this is going to be one that you're definitely going to want look at all these amazing butterflies but watch this They're photopolymer. And look at the dyes that come with them. And look at this butterfly right here. We're going to use him. You die cut him. And he's already embossed. How pretty is that? Okay. So it's got some nice frames in there. It's got the uh, die cut that you can cut this group of butterflies out. But this is the group we're going to use right now does have some two-step in here too so let's grab that so quit jabbering and let's do some stamping all right we're also going to use this ridiculously awesome which i just love the stamp set i like the big sayings i like the font ah love love yes i might have a stamp addiction hi my name is tina I'm addicted to stamping. Okay. Let's trim this one. To, oops, that's not the actual one I want, is it? I want the one... Let's go with one that's solid fade. Let's see if I can find it. I mean, we could do it on this. That, that would add cute... Um, a great texture having that white. Here we are. Here's the one I really want. I want this one. The one that's solid. Okay, so we're going to create two cards with this, but I'm going to trim it down to the size I need, which is regular. We've got regular card bases there, so let's do four. Save your scraps. I'm going to do five and a quarter, but I want... A uh, little bit more of the darker fade, so I'm going to cut the lighter side off. Put a five and a quarter. And we're ready. Now you could do this with your Stamparatus, but I think I'll have a little more control doing it on my block. And what I want to do is I'm going to fill this sheet with these butterflies and leaves. So we're going to bring in our Versamark. Um, uh, 
Make sure you ink up your Versamark just a little bit every time you use it. You'll have a lot better uh, luck with it. You know, sometimes they dry out and, you know, just even if you add one or two drops of your reinker each time you use it, it just keeps it nice and juicy. All right, let's get, oh, let me bring in a scrap paper. Versamark all over my desk here. So let's ink this up real well. And then I'm going to try to organize them on the sheet where I can get them fairly close together with minimal empty spots in between. When you let your stamp set for just a second, let that ink absorb into your paper. Let's see, we might be able to turn this one. You can see on the darker um, paper where your Versamark is. Oh, perfect. Let's see if I can turn this. I want to try to get. I want to get as close as I can without overlapping. Let's see if I can. So just keep turning it until you can find where it fills in your spot. I just dig that edge a little bit. I have to do this in two. Let's do it in two just in case. Pull one there. I'm trying not to touch the Versa mark with my fingers when I'm pulling it up. Hmm, trying to find a way. Oh, there we go, right there. There we go. Look at that. Okay, now what you can do, I was just going to show you something. They have, uh, Ranger has these embossing pens. These are really cool. They're just Versamark pens. I'm going to add just some dots in the little blank areas. I'm just going to make little circles. There's only a couple areas, but I just didn't want them to be that boldly empty. There we go. And now we're going to bring our heat and stick and grab my tweezers. Okay, let's add our heat and stick. I'm going to flip this over because I have Versamark on there. I don't want my heat and stick. So, so generously. Go over your image. You can see in the right light if you missed anything. I think we've got it.
Okay, let me get this back in the container. Now remember I told you you didn't want to... Uh, I can see where I missed a spot right now in the right light. I'm going to add a little more to it. It's right in the middle of the page too. There we go. So remember I told you you didn't want to overheat your heating stick? So always heat up your heat tool first. Get it nice and warm. And this melts really fast. And it's already melting. Okay, you're heating it just till it's melt. Oh, it's just about right there. Okay, you want to heat it just till it's melted. Now we're going to bring in our gilding plates. And I'm going to suggest you have a large either Tupperware or container to try to contain them. Make sure all of your ceiling fans are off. Don't sneeze. You'll have foil everywhere. This is a really fine, fine metal i mean look at that it's just a really see how it floats and it would go everywhere if you sneezed so i've got these out to show you a different different ways to burnish them so you're just going to take these flakes and i just use my finger as you can feel your uh, heat and stick sticky Take your finger and kind of rub them into the glue. And it seems like a hot mess, but it's, it's not too bad. And the other way, the other reason for having a nice tray is you'll be able to put them back into your jar. And even as you use them and the pieces get smaller and smaller, I mean, that you can keep using them. You don't want, I'll show you, you don't want a lot of really bad itty bitty little crumbs or anything really aren't necessary to put back into your jar. But the little pieces, yeah, absolutely. Or once you've got them out on your tray and you're wanting to put them away, I keep my, oh, see, I talked too much and blew it away. Um, I keep mine in a, uh, a Tupperware with a lid. It's easier to get them in there. Sometimes it's hard to get them back into the jar. We're just going to burnish all of these with our finger. Look at that fun texture. suggestion now you can burnish just continue to burnish it with your finger if you'd like that works fine I usually take a fairly soft uh, and yet firm brush just get an old paintbrush and then just go over your image the stiffer the product you use 
like if you were to use a Stampin' Sponge to kind of buff off the extra, the Stampin' Sponge uh, is coarser so it takes off some of the popped up texture. I mean, it still works, but it depends on how much texture you want your image to have, if that makes sense. I just take my brush. And then after I'm done with my gilding for the day, I'll take and put all my extras in a container. Okay, you're not going to rub it off of there, that's for sure. All you're doing is getting all the little spots inside that didn't have glue. And the brush kind of polishes it for you. Polishes the gold to give it shine. So you can see where this would work excellent to create backgrounds with your background stamps. I mean, that's all we did here is create a background. But it's so pretty, I'm not going to use it as a background. I'm going to use it as a regular card. Make sure I get all my loose pieces off. Grab my some of the fine detailed areas like in your your wings there you can just take your sponge and it'll get the excess out so the uh, look at the detail it leaves in those butterflies beautiful and I'm sure you know I'm sure camera doesn't do it justice so now I'm going to try to pick up my big pieces here and you'll see where I say it's a little hard to get them back in the jar but I want at least my big pieces back in there okay and immediately put the lid on your jar Okay, there we go. Now we have this beautiful, look at that, isn't that fun? How pretty is that? I missed a little detail on him, but that's okay. So now what we're gonna do, let me wipe, wipe off the space here a little bit. I have some, I have some heat and stick powder that got away from me. Now with this one piece, we're going to create two cards. And to do so, we're going to bring in my, uh, yeah, you guessed it, my rectangle stitch dies. Use them for everything. Let's see, let's cut the center out that we can put a greeting. And since we're using this, I want to use this greeting right here. I want to make sure my die is the right size. And I want to make sure I have a nice frame. We do. So I'm going to run this through my machine. pretty see this just reminds me of a gilded picture frame on its own 
next time you're at the craft store so look around and if you look at uh, vintage photo frames they have gilding on them okay so let me find my dice here put that away and now I'm just gonna bring in let's do this one first I've already cut my foil and I'm going to use an embossing folder to create this uh, kind of texture on my cardstock. That embossing folder is called this painted texture. It's like a 3D. It almost looks like um, oh, like an old lath and plaster house. You know, the wall texture on a lath and plaster. All right, so which way do I want this to go? And I'm only going to do the front of the card. So I'm just going to put it in there to the uh, fold. And then I'm going to run this through my die cut. I'm super excited. I just found out that my mini machine is shipped so i should have it any day i'm hoping uh it works as smooth as i need to be able to use my arm my hand i mean i have a power machine here but you know there's just nothing better than doing the old crank and watching it go through look at that isn't that a pretty texture Okay, so we're going to fold that. Yeah, we're going to bring in dimensionals because I want to add some dimensionals to that. I haven't decided on a grading for this one. You know, you you got to find something, you know, kind of small because you don't want to take away from your your project and your technique. And yes, I do not scrimp on dimensionals. I just don't want my cards to crush. I use the the postage that is hand sort. You can buy this postage. It tells the um, post office to hand sort your mail. I use that though, but just in case. I'll have the measurements for these cards on my uh, blog post here down below and the instructions on how we did these. these little dimensional backings all over everything they're like my little nemesis say like the other day I was in the kitchen how I got one of these I found it um well maybe it's because it traveled to the coffee pot but it was right next to the coffee pot uh-huh okay so now I'm just going to center this on here And look at that, you have a quick and elegant card, that simple. I would think maybe doing, we have that new set of messages coming out too. I'm just going to do a little message across here. So I think um, when I finish and I get the message on, I'll add it to the blog post. Okay, there's card one. How simple was that? Now we got card two. And I, again, want to use dimensionals to pop up my frame. But before I do that, I want to center it on here to determine where my greeting goes. So 
so that our green onion centered we'll lay it on here and a little bit of extra flake on there it'll pop it off we'll lay that in there and let's grab make ridiculously happy now I'm gonna go ahead and carry this through in the same gold leafing I think it came out great that way you don't have to here you can even do a uh, you know a different color insert or you know white with something colored stamped on it if you wanted but I'm just gonna carry the design through with the gilding foil And on this one, I'm going to do a little bit of my, like, embossing buddy stuff here so I don't get flakes where I don't want them. Let's grab our first mark. Looks like nice coverage. Take our frame off there for now. Now we want to add our heat and stick. You could do this technique too with your um, stencils so if you had a stencil sponge your uh, Versamark in through your stencil got a couple spots that got smeared a little here get it off there Let's get the you can use a little tiny brush if you get somewhere you don't want it let's see if I have a small brush a little bit that went where I didn't want it to okay there we go now we're going to heat it up and remember to preheat your gun that quick and we're going to add our foil I'm going to try to pick up some of that laying there oh, I moved my card pretty fast there and foil went everywhere buff it with your finger you could probably even use uh, 
those, uh, I don't know, adhesive erasers might work. I probably wouldn't because I, I would worry that it would uh, take off the actual glue that is there. So we're just going to buff that. these back up or they go everywhere okay we've got that we're gonna pop up our frame you can lay it straight down if you wanted but I'm gonna do dimensionals When I have big frames like this, I take the edges of my dimensional sheets and do my long strips. short work of it doing it that way and you want to use all of your dimensionals anyway all the time this kind of <clears throat> two cards out of one one deal here in there look at that now we need our little butterfly because I just think that little butterfly is adorable. So let's get him out. And he's already embossed. I may have already showed you that, but he's already got embossing. So I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of regular foil. pop up in the corner there so what I'm going to do is just take my snips and create a thin thin right on his body there bend his wings up a little bit so Gonna put them right here in the corner. 
And there you go. You have two quick and easy cards. If you make this and you think of a greeting or how you would further step that up, please feel free to share that with me. I'd enjoy seeing it. I hope you'll give these gilding flakes a try. I think once you try them, you're going to be addicted. Like I said, there's the heat and stick powder that Stampin' Up! has. It's quick and easy. Or you can even do... Here, I'll show you real quick. Take your tearing tape. And let's do some designs here. So we're going to take our tearing tape. Try to get my line straight. Let's do one more. So you got your tear and tape there. Now just trim it off. Bring back your gilding flakes. I'm going to use my, wherever I put them. Oh, my tweezers here. And take off the release paper on here. Maybe take off the release paper. Wow, it's fighting me today. Now you're going to take your gilding foil. Oops, I opened that really fast. You see the flakes go flying. gonna rub that foil into the tape Oops. Oh, went flying everywhere. So you can use this as accents on anything. I still think, and maybe I'll try to do a video. I have it in my head to, to try the technique using one of my two-step stamps. I just think, like if you had a, maybe a, two-step flower and you could do the accents in the gold flake oh wouldn't that be pretty let's see if I can pick this up close the jar do as I say not as I do look at the texture that leaves so pretty. Like I said, if you just do it with a little brush, it leaves a lot more texture than if you use something that's stiffer. It kind of rubs some of that texture off. 
But how quick and simple is that to add some decoration to your card? Put your greeting on there. Well, there you go. So that's just another way you can use the flakes. But they're coming out in the January to June mini catalog. We've got uh, celebrations starting then. If you don't have a demonstrator and you need a catalog or the catalogs, uh, feel free to contact me. I will send them to you. If you are a customer of mine and have ordered in the last six months, your catalogs are already on the way. <clears throat> so I hope you have a very happy Stampin' Day and you had fun today playing with gilding flakes. Bye-bye now.